When a father loves his son, there's no good thing he'll withhold. Grace to you. Yesterday, we spoke about the real word. I would like to continue on the same theme. If you haven't seen the video, I encourage you to look it up on my wall or on Bosco Ministries page. The crux of what I said yesterday is that the Bible is not God, but one of the means that God uses to communicate with creation. The Bible is the Biblion of Revelation 5, that no one can open and read except the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the slain Lamb, the Spirit of Revelation. The Word is God, and the Word is is the eternal Logos, Jesus Christ, who opens his mouth and pronounces truths that are called Rema. That is the particular, personal, peculiar conversation God has with each individual differently. Hence the necessity of having a relationship not with a book, the Bible, but with a being, the Holy Spirit. Now, for today, I would like to address the question that the church at large, and please, in brackets, Please note that I believe in the church, the local church in particular. I have accepted Christ's offer of forgiveness and salvation in the church. It's because of the pastor of that church that I'm alive today. I respect and admire every honest, hard-working pastor who tries his best to spread God's gospel. I have been the pastor of a church for over 30 years, and I'm presently part of a church. So, I would like to address the question that the church at large has been sweeping under the carpet for centuries. And the question is this, if it's true that Jesus said, ask anything in my name and I will do it, how come I asked and he didn't? Or one could say, if it's true that the Bible says you shall lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover, how come I did lay my hands on my mother and she died anyway? Or any any one of hundreds of different interpretations of the same question. The Bible says it should, it would, it will, but it doesn't. Now I know that these are questions that have plagued the heart of Christians since the beginning of the Gospel, i.e. the thorn in Paul's flesh. And as far as I'm concerned, be it far from me to approach such a sacred argument flippantly or arrogantly. Hey, but this is what I believe the Lord showed me you judge. I believe that the Bible is not a book but a message and I believe that that message is personalized and individualized for every human being who ever walked or will walk the face of this planet. Hence the Bible not as ink on paper but the spirit on flesh is alive. Example: I have in my church for many years a precious and wonderful African lady called Margaret. She's a woman, a mother, she's of dark complexion, and it calls up one of the African tribes in South Africa. My name on the other hand is Mari. I'm a man, I've never been a mother, I'm basically pink, and even though I consider myself an African by adoption, I was born in Italy. Now, wouldn't it be totally unfair if God gave the same life instructions to me as he gives to Margaret? Hey, my past is different from hers, I have different experiences. My present is different from hers. I have different circumstances. My future is different from hers. I have different expectations. And yet, religious teaching says that the Bible tells Mario and Margaret the same thing. Every time. Never mind their past, present or future. One message for everybody. That's why most of the time the chapter and verse do not work. Not because they're not from God, but because he didn't say it to you. Or maybe he didn't say it to you at this point in time. When you realize that God speaks individually and not collectively, personally and not generally, at a particular point in time and not as a blanket statement, you understand that not every chapter and verse can be applied to you and to your life. Hey, David killed a giant with a sling and a stone. Maybe you need to get yourself a bazooka. Daniel survived the lions in the den you might decide to stay away from zoos. Paul was stoned three times and survived. You might want to avoid flying rocks of any kind. Do you see what I mean? Religion has relegated the Bible to the status of any other dead book. One statement applies to everybody. Ask Jesus to do something, he'll do it. Believe enough 
and you can move mountains. Believe enough, and you can handle snakes. No, my friend, no, I don't think so. Other books say the same thing to everyone who reads, but not the Bible. Because the Bible is the Spirit of God alive in a book. Not a book full of words, but a message in every word in the book. Not a book written on the surface of a piece of paper with ink for everyone, but the message whispered in your heart today, now, at this very moment. And that's why most of the times you lay hands on the sick and they don't recover. He didn't say it to you. He said it to his disciples at that point in their lives, at that time. There's only one spot in the whole Bible that I found where Jesus makes a blanket statement that without doubt includes me and includes everyone else. In John 17, 20-23, the Bible reports, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through the word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them, and as you have loved me. Yes, in the context of what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross, and God's love for the whole humanity, the message, this message, is the same for everyone. Otherwise, you have to cultivate your own relationship with Jesus, the Word made flesh, <laughs> not the Word made paper. But then again, that's what I believe God revealed to me. You might need to find your own answers. God bless you.